Hi guys, yes it's that time again, it's time for another episode of my weekly news round series and this time it's episode 5, ton of info to get through so let's get into it. Well the film that we're all pretty much looking forward to seeing next year that comes out on May the 3rd is of course Avengers 4. Now they've just added the 13 reasons why actress Catherine Langford in an unnamed role. Now with actress Emma Furnham reportedly cast as a teenage Cassie Lang, it's hard not to take note of 22-year-old Langford's resemblance to Cassie, Cassie's young Avengers teammate, Kate Bishop. This is when they're speculating on guys that Kate Bishop is gonna be appearing in Avengers 4. Interesting. I think her first appearance is in Young Avengers issue one. Look out for that. I picked it up recently, but it was kind of like a reprint, so it didn't really count. It, it, they class it as the third printing, but for me, I want the first. So I'm still on the hunt for that book. Now, talking of Marvel and the MCU, Marvel president Kevin Feige has just dropped a couple of MCU bombshells, according to Eric Weber of Critics' Choice. Now, the first of them is that we're going to be getting the Avengers trailer very soon for Avengers 4. That's going to be before the end of the year. Um, and it's going to, um, unsurprisingly, reveal the title of the new film. Now, what are we getting? Um, Annihilation is being discussed. The one I sort of leaning towards at the moment is The Last Avenger. I read that somewhere on a, on a forum. Now, obviously, with the first Avenger being Captain America, strongly rumoured that Chris Evans uh, could be, this could be his last role uh, for Captain America. So, to finish with The Last Avenger just makes a little bit more sense to me. But I cover my bases. I picked up Annihilation 1 because that book is getting a lot of steam at the moment. Now, the, the main thing that Kevin Feige came up with is the fact that there could well be soon a huge Marvel character come into the MCU and the name that was dropped was Namor. Yeah, of course we're getting Aquaman soon so Marvel may be throwing their uh, watery hat into the ring. Now Kevin Feige said they're still deciding if and when Namor will appear. So they're just trying to find, find I mean I thought they were some sort of legal uh, legalities as to why because he was owned by a different studio but I don't know. They're saying this could well very soon happen. That would be very exciting. Now, of course, he is like a, basically a golden age character, so virtually very, very few of us are going to be able to afford his first, but, you know, there are other books we can spec on, I'm sure. Uh, the other thing he did say, that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is now being put on indefinite hold at the moment. I'm guessing they really haven't recovered from Sean Gunn. Um, and his antics, obviously Sean Gunn was fired, now he's over at DC, which I'm a little disappointed in. Yes, the guy's a fantastic uh, movie maker. I, uh, Guardians is fantastic. I love his horror film I watched recently called The Balco Experiment. But then you read about what he's come out with and I know DC maybe are a little bit, you know, behind the ball with uh, the MCU, but come on, surely, you know, they've got integrity and they kind of lowered it by, because uh, he's now uh, up for directing Suicide Squad 2. Not that it didn't need help, the first one had a lot of falls, but oh, I don't know. I'm not happy about it really. Now, uh, a film that was meant to be coming from Disney was another Star Wars spin-off, and that was going to be Boba Fett. This was... Um, this very nearly come to fruition, but they, they favoured the Mandal Mandalorian TV series. Um, but a little bit of news just broke that the Boba Fett film, which I would would have been really excited to see, was going to be include Boba Fett, like a Magnificent Seven sort of thing. And uh, we, we would have had Boss, there would have been Dengar, Forlom, uh, Zuckus, IG-88, um, the whole gang were there from The Empire Strikes Back, and that was going to be the premise of the film, and they were going to go out on adventures. I would love to have seen that. Um, but like I say, they've scrapped that for now. Solo definitely suffered, I think, due to uh, The Last Jedi. Um, 
Solo was a good film. There's no doubt about that. Um, for me, Woody Harrelson was fantastic in the role as Beckett. Stole the show. Um, but the young, the young actor who played um, Han Solo, he did a, a fair old job, you know. And I, I want to see more from uh, the young Han Solo uh, characters. Um, talking of Star Wars, but we had we have got Alan Tudyk. Well, he was uh, he he played the role of the robot, and I cannot think for the life of me. That, Jin, Jin Tuso or something was it? I can't think. But the robot was in Rogue One. He voiced the robot. Um, K two O I think that's the word. K two O Jin Uso. Um, well, he's just been cast as uh, Joker in the upcoming Harley Quinn animated series. Um, yeah, that could be could be fun. Um, whenever you get Joker and Harley together, it's pretty good. Unless it's a Suicide Squad. Um, Talking of animated, now there's going to be a, I'm not sure about this guys, there's going to be a Star Trek animated comedy coming to CBS All Access, focusing on the lowest ranking members of Starfleet. Yeah, I'm all for a bit of humour, but a comedy on Star Trek. I don't know about that. Um, I'm excited to see a Picard return though, you know, Picard. Um, Patrick Stewart. That's going to be uh, pretty good. Um, the guy who played the the Klingon officer, and I can't, I'm not a massive fan into Star Trek. He recently came back and said he's got no ambition about rejoining. I'm sure if the dollars are there, they'll all come flooding back. Uh, anime news, and I know there's a lot of you out there that love anime. A couple of my good friends, uh, JPR Flash and Comic Bandage, they, lo they love their anime. I can't stand it personally. My daughter loves it. Absolutely loves it. She tries to make me watch a lot of it, and I've sat through a ton of it. I've watched that Full Metal Alchemist animated thing. Oh my days, what is that? I can handle it. And then he just goes berserk, and it just. You know, uh, Death, is it Death on Titan? Giant Titan. They, that was all right. Like giant people, I suppose, eating humans and things. That was okay. Um, but anyway, My Hero Academia. Now, that's meant to be a massive anime. I don't know about too much about this. But there is a live-action movie in the works from Legendary and Shiwisa. They're combining to produce a live-action uh, My Hero Academia. Now, I, I watched with my daughter um, the live-action Death Note, but not the the Netflix version, because apparently that's trash. We watched, like, the Japanese uh, like movie of it, and it was okay, you know, it wasn't too bad. And we did, she did make me sit through the full Metal Alchemist live action. Not a big fan, um, it was okay, I suppose. Five out of ten. Um, yeah, now Dante Perelia, uh, Pereira Olsen and Douglas Hodge have just been cast as a young Bruce Wayne and an older Alfred Pennyworth for Warner Brothers' as Joker. Uh, Pereira also is known for um, happy for his roles in Happy and Jessica Jones, my favourite show. Uh, sorry, Hodge has been appearing in Petty Dreadful and Red Sparrow and Middlemarch. Now, obviously, there was big news this year about Walking Dead and that of Andrew Lincoln. Of course, he's finally wrapping it up as Rick Grimes, supposedly. Now, I've since read that he could return later at some point, possibly in a kind of different role. What would that be, as a zombie? Um, well, like I say, he will be leaving the show on the episode What Comes After, and that is on November the 4th. Um, but when he does leave the role, he is going to be leaving the role as one of the highest paid television television actors. He reportedly is 10th on the list and he earns a staggering salary of $11 million a year. So, I don't know. He wants to spend more time with his family. I think he's, he's based in the UK. Uh, now, Oscar news. The Incredibles 2 and Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And 20 other th 
23 other animated films have been submitted, submitted for Oscars. That would be great to see Spider-Man into the uh, Spider-Verse get an Oscar. Um, the animation is as good as I've ever seen, so you never know. Incredibles 2 is alright. Uh, now, the Daredevil showrunner Eric Olsen is already contemplating the show's potential future. Well, I, I can imagine. I bet he's sweating a little bit, isn't he? Because, uh, obviously, we've just had Luke Cage and uh, Iron Fist um, cancel, which I'm a, I'm a bit going about because I thought, like I said in previous, that season twos of both those shows were a huge improvement. Um, I've just started watching Daredevil 3, season 3, and uh, so far it's a bit of a slow, a slow build-up. Obviously, he's... He's kind of like spoilers. He, he's lost his sort of abilities a little bit, and he's trying to find them again. Um, but I, I'm enjoying Kingpin. It, Kingpin as always. Uh, a little bit more about him in a minute. Now, Deadpool writers Rep Reese and Paul Wernick are in early talks to write a reboot of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. They were okay, weren't they, the earlier ones? But they're just reashing it now. How many times can you see pirates fighting skeletons and things like that? You know? Well, the five films have actually made $4.5 billion at the box office, which is insane. Now, Jerry Bruckheimer, the longtime producer, is still going to be involved. But uh, by all accounts, Johnny Depp, is uh, his involvement is uh, undetermined at the moment. I, I'm not a big fan of Johnny Depp. You know, he's never really done a film that grabs me at all. Um, him as that mad actor, Alice in Wonderland. Oh my days! Um, and I think he kind of overacts. He's all right as uh, Jack Sparrow, but he kind of overacts it a little bit for me. I don't know. We'll see where he goes. Now, oh, here we go. That's what happens on live TV. Uh, now, my favourite show, I've just been watching all the first episodes. I've watched the first Supergirl, I've watched the first Flash, and my favourite, it was a great episode as well. Uh, I've just seen Stephen Amell back as Arrow. Well, he has just shared some on-set pics from the filming of the current Elseworlds crossover. And this is really exciting for me because I think it was in a video for somebody's channel. I, I had to uh, say... What was a, my favorite? One of my favorite shows of the night is, and regarding to the comic book world, and it it, it was funnily enough because I've just recently picked up the DVD set and watched it all the way through. I watched the early episodes, but it was John Wesley Ship as the Flash. I've had the honor of meeting the guy and getting a signature and a photo. Really, really nice guy. Well, like I said, Stephen Amal has just posted some on-set photos. Now, as you can remember, he had the muscle suit, didn't he, John Wesley Shipp? There he is. Remember him there? It was a great look. I did like it. He was a good flash, too. Um, well, of course, I showed you in last week's that Stephen Amal and Grant Gustin are swapping roles. <laughs> Stephen Amal is going to be the flash, and Grant Gustin, obviously, the green arrow. And look at this. We are getting... Like I said, John Wesley Ship back in the original costume from the 1990s, which is epic. Like I say, I, I very, I've got the comic of that as well, and I've very nearly got John Wesley Ship to, uh, to sign it recently. But it was 25 quid, and the end of the day, I've already had his signature. I wanted more comics. But uh, look at this slider. That is just epic. Getting ready for battle. We got Supergirl. Green Arrow, and two flashes ready for battle. Awesome stuff. Like I said, in this Elseworlds last week, they're, they're going to be introducing the ranch from Smallville. Uh, from the Kent's ranch, you know? So, who, who knows what they can do down the line with these kind of Elseworlds tales. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. Now, talking of the CW, Supergirl... And Batwoman. What a team up, you know? Yeah, it's not Superman and Batman on the small screen, but at least we're getting some sort of like in, intermingling between uh, Metropolis and Gotham. Here we go. It's a picture that they've just posted on uh, Instagram. And that is Ruby Rose with uh, the Supergirl. Melissa Benoit. 
So that is exciting, isn't it? I'm excited to see this. Like I say, Ruby Rose was getting slammed from not being gay enough to play the role, but you know, I saw her make a good actress in my opinion. She's got a good image too. Um, I'm excited to see where that goes. Now, like I said, we, I spoke about Star Wars a bit more. We got Mark Hamill has confirmed, obviously, that he's going to be in episode nine. And then he's come out with a little strange thing. You know, I've moaned about this. I, Last Jedi, I wanted to see Luke Skywalker in full on battle mode. I wanted to see him wipe out everything. But, you know, the iconic image of him walking out from the, between the doors as he winks to 3PO was just set up beautifully. And then we were cheated, weren't we? Because he disappeared later, puff of smoke. Well, he has come out and explained basically that the Force killed Luke Skywalker. And you, you have to acknowledge the irony in his fate, he tweeted. Almost like an addict that killed his habit cold turkey and remained clean for decades only to reuse it just once and tra tragically overdoses. So, when you, when you comes down to it, I suppose that could have happened. You know, he's not been at, used his powers for so long and then he, he brought it back and he sort of OD'd on it. It's a bit of a dark thing though for a, a Star Wars film, but I want to see somehow, I mean, I don't want to see just Luke stood there with Yoda as a force ghost just chatting away. I want him to somehow come back. Is he that powerful that we can get him back? Oh, I don't know. You know, you take Han from me, you take Luke. Rocky nearly died a couple of years ago. If they take, and, and Rambo's new film is called Last Blood. If they take my, Rocky and Rambo from me, I'm done. <laughs> I can't lose all my uh, heroes. Um, now, the Wonder Woman 1984, of course, uh, we got the villain Cheetah appearing. Now, I put on a hot book alert that I believe that could be another villain soon appearing. And that was Justice League, issue one, and the first appearance of Maxwell Lord. Um, I'm sticking by that at the moment. I, I've got no more info on that. But uh, the film has been put back to its original release date of June the 5th, 2020. So, yeah, I think it was stated to come out a bit later than that. So I'm happy for that. Um, I'm excited. You know, people rubbish the DCU films. And yes, they're not as good as the Marvel probably on the whole. But Wonder Woman, for one, was fantastic. And I can't wait to see more. Um, okay, a uh, bit of Batman news. Now, I I'm, I'm started re-watching, well, I haven't quite finished season four of Gotham yet. One of my favourite, favourite shows. You know, you get, a, you get a lot of shows where there's there's weak links in a lot of them. You know, for Daredevil for me is Foggy Nelson, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Arrow, I, Felicity does my head in, for instance. Um, you know, there's always somebody in one of these shows that doesn't quite hit the mark. But for me, the entire cast of Gotham is fantastic. And yeah, and it's a bit of an Elseworlds because obviously there's a young Bruce and the, the villains are a lot older than him. But I love it. Well, anyway, talking of the villains in the show, writer-producer Tizi Chun has revealed the first look at actor Shane West in costume as Bane. Bane, yeah, we're getting him in season five, which is going to be sadly the final season of Gotham. And that picture, let's get it up for you guys. Here he is. So, like I said, this is Shane West as Bane. Without the head. <laughs> Here he is. There we go, guys. That is going to be Bane in Gotham. So, yeah, I like the look. Could work. It's an early prototype of Bane, isn't it, after all? Um, Guillermo del Toro and Jim Henson are a company are uh, teaming up for a Pinocchio stop motion film. 
I probably won't be queuing up for that one, but uh, for the younger audience, it could be a bit of bit of fun. But more news from the Flash now. The hundredth episode is fast approaching, and in that episode are going to be his most iconic villains all returning and teaming up. We are going to get Savitar. We're going to get Trajectory. We are going to get Rival. We're going to get Reverse Flash and Professor Zoom's coming back. So. All the speedsters are going to be teaming up, which would be okay. You know, I thought for a while they oversaturated Flash with too many speedsters, but that has been addressed the last couple of seasons. I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more of Cicada. Um, I love it with, with Flash and Arrow because they unearth little, little. Um, well, they basically make some of your non-key books key, don't they? They announce a character, for instance. Um, Gridlock appeared in episode one, and I just showcased that in one of my alerts. It's just a little book to look out for for pennies. It's, it's good fun. Um, now, talking of Daredevil, like I said, Kingpin actor Vincent De Onofrio has said that Daredevil is here to stay, and I'm glad about that. Um, can't keep losing these shows. If they take Jessica Jones, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> um, it's a bit of sad. Well, you know, I haven't watched Simpsons for a long long time but you know 10 year ago 15 year ago i quite enjoyed the show i watched the movie at the cinema um well simpsons is reportedly dropping one of its main stars one of the main uh, characters and they are reportedly quietly going to drop a poo from future episodes and it's something to do with um religion i believe one of the episodes that i think was called my way on the on the highway to heaven which um happened on the 14th of october apparently there was some uproar from what i'm gathering something to do with god and uh like i say um due to the criticism apu is gonna be no more that's pretty sad now more star wars news um my big issue with these last couple of episodes seven and eight are the lack of a really good villain to get behind. Um, I was liking Smoke. Is it Snoke? Yeah, Snoke, wasn't it? And then he was just wiped out way too easily by Ray and Kylo Ren. Well, in episode nine, it is rumored that there Kylo Ren is going to have a new super weapon. You know, so we'll see where that goes. Um, his, his new lightsaber, I just didn't like the concept of it with the handle lit up surely that would have just smoked his hand up. i don't know um venom yeah if you haven't seen it get out there guys and enjoy that film um it's not as bad as they make out it's not the best but it's a solid seven out of ten probably um well venom has broke the 500 million mark at worldwide box offices that's that's great um I want to see more Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock, and apparently he signed up for three films. Uh, Thor Ragnarok's uh, star Carl Urban, who obviously plays Scourge, um, he wants to appear in more uh, MCU projects. Well, that's a nice payday at the end of the day. Um, he was discussing perhaps joining something like a Deadpool spin off, so good actor. I enjoyed the Scourge character actually. It was the same way he, he, he bit the dust. But of course, that character is back in As Guardians of the Galaxy at the moment. Um, now, my final bit of uh, movie and TV news is that um, there is a there's a project apparently that Marvel are working on. Now, the 2020 slate for films I'm very excited about because they're only having two films coming out that year. But I've got both of the books, which I'm excited for. Apparently, Guardians of the Galaxy has been shelved. That film was meant to come out in 2020. Now, we are just getting The Eternals. We've got two copies of issue one. I'm made up about that. And the other film we are getting is Black Widow. I'm made up about that. I've got my Tales of Suspense 52. Probably my best book in my collection. Um, well, there's a secret project that Marvel apparently working on. And that is something to do with Hawkeye. Yeah. Now... Whether we're going to be getting a Hawkeye series on the Disney live stream, because we we have already got um, 
We're getting a Loki film with Tom Hiddleston, and we're getting a Scarlet Witch thing uh, series with Elizabeth Olsen. I think both slated for eight, -ish, uh, eight episodes. So exciting! Um, now there was rumours in the week that they were also adding a, a, a Nick Fury series to that. Well, apparently they're thinking a bigger picture than that, and rumours are coming out that it's going to be bigger and better than a Nick Fury thing. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think we need a Nick Fury show. I want to see powers. I mean, well, they are kind of discussing a Fantastic Four TV series coming out. I want to see them on the big screen, done well. But an introduction with the series could be okay. But it could be that Hawkeye is getting a series on the Disney streaming service. Um, and it is going to be based on Matt Fractions and David Arjas' critically acclaimed run on Hawkeye, the comic books. So those books might be getting a little bit of heat as of now, guys. Would be cool to see a bit more Hawkeye. I don't mind the character of Renner. Okay, uh, just a little bit of comic news more so. Well, NASA has named 21 new gamma ray constellations that include one of the Incredible Hawk, one of Godzilla, and one of Thor's Enchanted Hammer. So they are getting uh, like stars, I guess, um, named after those things. That's pretty cool. The West Coast Avengers issue 4 variant introduces the guest star Jimmy Kimmel. These mashups are doing my head and I've told you about this. At least DC are trying to be fresh with their uh, books. New, new Age of Heroes books. That are slowly biting the dust one by one. Silencer and Sideways stand out for me. Too many mashups Marvel. Get your act together. Well... Iron Hammer issue two. I picked up the first one. And it was okay. I picked it up because I grabbed the one in ten for cheap. But um, issue two is going to debut the Infinity Warped Rainbow Bridge. So what that looks like, I have no idea. Do I really want to know? I don't know. And finally, issue twenty-five of Nightwing. A little while ago. Dick Grayson lost his dick. He lost his dick, yeah. And now he is known as Rick Grayson. Is that going to stick? Oh, I don't know. I, know. I suppose he'd had, DC have had enough of the jokes. Uh, because I think it was uh, Dick Grayson and Miss Martian have got, gone through some sort of portal and they got renamed or certainly... Nightwing's Dick Grayson did. So is it going to be just Rick Grayson now? I don't know what your thoughts are on that, guys. Seems a bit drastic. Well, that's it. That's another wrap with Daz's News Round. Um, thank you to everybody again who subscribes and makes it all worthwhile by following my videos. I am a new personal world record of 481. Um, I enjoy just making these videos for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching them. Stay tuned because in a minute I'm going to be making another video. And that is going to be my hot top 10 list. Take care for now. That's Dazzy over now. Bye-bye.